Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Dreamhouse, released by Asmodee, is one of those games that kind of hit the market, and you're like, wow, that's a neat theme. Why don't we see this more often? It's a really unique, fun theme about designing your dream house, but what's inside, not necessarily the outside. Everybody has the same amount of room, but it's what's on the inside that counts, and it's really fun to build these crazy houses with these nice little touches and a tree house in the backyard. And boy, did they nail it just from a theme standpoint. And the artwork is fantastic. The bright colors, everything looks fantastic in this game. The package really comes together. Now, what you're going to get is a light little card drafting game. And this is one of my, for, for the light end of it, this is one of my go-to games. You're going to have these cards up on. Based on turn orders, you're going to draft them first. You'll be taking them and you have to build your house up. And it really nails it for me. I like the scoring on this. It's very easy to understand. You, know, you get little bonuses for having like two bathrooms and, you know, if you want to have your living room all together, it's better to have one living room together than it is to have two spread apart. It makes complete sense with the theme. The interaction is there. The uh, drafting mechanism works with this one. And this is one of my go-to drafting games. If I want to introduce drafting to somebody, you know, Sushi Go is a really good one, but I think the theme's a little disconnected. Super easy game. Love Sushi Go. But with Dream House, people instantly understand that you want a bathroom in your house. They instantly understand that you want a bedroom in your house, and you can't build something without something below it. it. Makes complete sense when you're going through this, and people like it. I mean, you HGTV crowd, they eat this game up. We love this one. This is something that will be in my collection for a very long time, if not forever. And it just works with so many different people. It's so much fun. It's very easy to jump into. It gives you a lot of strategy. It can be cutthroat if you want it to be, and it's just one that I highly, highly, highly recommend. And that's Dream House. Add this one to your collection immediately. Here is Dream House. You can tell this has a very, very beautiful cover of this little girl. She's got a new house, and her mom and dad are here, and they're obviously moving in. It just really speaks to the game. You can see the brother's already out there throwing paper airplanes, I guess. And you're going to have a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. This is going to be the main player board. It's not really needed, but it kind of gives you a place to put the cards. It's really small. Each player is going to get one of these, which is just fantastic. Look at this. So this is going to be your player board which is made out to look just like a house. It's, it's cut funny, which is really neat, because you'll be placing things across to it. And you get enough to play this with four players, and they're identical. Uh, inside the box, you have a custom insert, which is beautiful. I don't know if you can tell, but it's made to look like a house. Obviously, this box is way too big for what you get. You're going to have some of these cardboard tiles that you'll get for extra little things that will be put in. On one side, they'll show the points, but if you'd rather just see it for the beauty of it, you'll have that. Your first player marker is big, chunky, and it is a house. You're going to have a scoring pad here. You're going to have plenty of these to go through. And you're going to have two decks of cards here. Now, this set is going to be your actual buildings that you'll be building, the rooms and stuff. You can see the set collection at the bottom. And then you're going to have your little roof ones that will be in the game. And you'll see these throughout. So that's what you get. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Here's the rule book. You can see it's the same thing on the box cover. You're going to, over here, you're going to have the goal of the game, a picture of all of the contents, and a picture of setup with the rules. You can tell, first of all, there's a lot of wasted space, which is great. It's fine. I mean, it doesn't really bother me at all. You'll see the rules of playing the game, kind of how it works, an explanation of some of the cards. And if you want to play two or three players, there will be some changes that will be need to be made. And it'll kind of go over the placing of the room cards here. This is going to be very, very important. This is the majority of the game and kind of how that works. And the end of game and scoring will be on this page and that page and just kind of show you. This is written for somebody who's never played games before. Then it'll kind of show you how the roofs work and give you an explanation of the of the cards that are in there. This rule book is much longer than I feel like it needs to be, but I think they're going for a mass market type audience and I can understand why. The last page is just some of the artwork that probably is used in designing the game. So, and then at the back of the scoring example, which is great, because that's what this game is all about, scoring. And you can kind of see a picture of maybe what a finished house would look like while you're playing. Rulebook is really good. I mean, you probably can roll through this, especially if you played any games in maybe 5, 10 minutes. Let's say 10 minutes and be up and rolling. If you played any card drafting games, it's going to be a piece of cake for you. So this is what the game is going to look like set up. You have two decks of cards. You have the roof cards up here, and you'll see the, the room cards here. And they'll be all shuffled up. And then what you'll do is you'll take four of these roof cards and you'll put them across the top. 
and you won't put anything here because this will be for the first player marker that will come out and then you'll put the rooms on the bottom of the game and you have them put up across and then you will be set up and ready to play it's that easy in a two or three player game the first player will get rid of one of these sets and get them off the board it won't be selectable otherwise if you're playing a four player game you will choose a set of cards and you're always choosing this card with the one above it if you choose the first one then you will take the first player marker for next round so you could maybe choose this another player second player may choose that third player may choose that and let's say the fourth player chose that and that's what you would do each round until these decks are gone and you won't have any more cards to pick what the players will be trying to do is fill up this house that they have and the first three spots here are the only spots you can have because it's kind of held up by this so if I had taken this bedroom card, I couldn't build here because there's nothing under it, right? And I couldn't build here because there's nothing under it. And here you'll need like a basement card, which I'll show you in a second. So each of these cards will tell you kind of how they score. If I have a bedroom card by itself, it will score one point. If I can get two cards next to each other, I would get four points. So that is worth one point. And you can kind of see maybe here that the kitchen works the same way, where you have one card and then two by itself is worth six. Where the living room is normally a bigger room, you have one, but two is four, and three is nine. So let's say I had a bedroom card there. That would work really, really good. And if it, later on, if I was to draft another one, I could put it here, and that would be worth four points. Now, you do have these cards that will go down in the basement, let's say. And they have different things you can do. So here's a garage and a storage room, and these will be placed down here as you draft them. And what that will allow you to do is build on top of it. And now I can build on top of that. Now, once I have these cards here, I could technically build something on the floor above it until all these. Now, there's enough rounds in the game to fill every space on your board once. Let's say I draft a bathroom and I want to put a bathroom on there. You can do so. Now, when you're placing these, you're obviously doing so to score the number of points that are listed on the bottom. With that said, there are additional points that you can score as the game goes through. Just keeping in mind, you always have to have something below the card, otherwise it can't be placed there. And these are the only three spots where you open up the game. So, what you can do is you can get points for decor. So some of these, like this card right here that was available in the first round, is a birdhouse. So you just take this birdhouse and put it near your home and it will score you one victory point at the end of the game. Now some of the cards will give you other artifacts and decorum items that you can utilize to put on certain rooms in your house as long as you have them. And there'll be some abilities that you have. So like, for example, you have the hot tub card. And this hot tub card says place a hot tub on a bathroom card. Now if you take this card, you can only place the hot tub if you have a bathroom card which we do, we have a bathroom right there. So we would take the hot tub tile and put it in our bathroom. And that's an addition that we made. We can look at the back of it and that's worth an additional two points at the end of the game. So that bathroom is now worth three. One for the printed and two for the hot tub. So that's something you can do is get points for decorum at the end of the game. Now, you're also gonna get bonus points at the end of the game, which you can get by accomplishing certain things that the game will require of you and ask of you which are called home functionality. So if you have a bathroom on each of the top two floors, so I have one here, and if I have one on the bottom floor, like this, I have a bathroom on the top floor and bottom floor, I will score an extra three points. If I also have a home with a bathroom, a kitchen, and a bedroom, so if I had all three of those in my house, then I would score an extra three points. So you can do that also. Now, you have these roof cards that you were taking at the beginning of the game. And you kind of put these, and when you get these, you will be putting these down here, face down in the stack. And once you put your cards down there, you can no longer look at them. It's a little memory thing that's going on. If you end the game with four cards that are the same, now these are all three different, but you can see in the deck, there are cards that will match up. So in this case, I've got two red ones, let's say. I would score an incomplete root, which is worth zero, except for this one has a one point on it, so I would just score that one point. But if I would have ended up with four cards that are exactly the same, here's a third one. Let's say I have four of these. 
then I would score eight points. If I had a myth mismatched room, so here's three of the same, but one difference mismatched, I'd only score three points. And any extra roof shoe cards you have over that are not worth anything. So you, this is like a little set collection you'll be doing, but you'll be placing these face down as you draft them and you can no longer look at them. At the end of the game, you will tally up all your scores. I'll show you one of our score sheets. You're going to have points for all the rooms that you had, your decor that you're able to get throughout the game, your functionality, and your roof cards. And you add up your scores and you can see whether we did a good job or not. But whoever has the most points will win the game. So simple drafting game. The rules are very simple about placing these. But as you place them, you'll be able to score more and more points. And that's how you play Dream Home. Who should buy this game? I'm going to recommend this from families, somebody that likes lighter games, and probably people that's into introductory card drafting games. This is a really good one. If you know somebody who's into HGTV or designing houses... This is the game to bring them into your hobby. You want to show them something, they're not going to understand, you know, killing dragons and orcs and all that. They will understand designing their house. And if they're a real estate agent or in designing homes, they just like to watch the HGTV channel, they're going to dig this. It's super cute. There's no orcs. Everything looks really neat inside of it. It's really cool to kind of see, even when you're done, win, lose, or draw, just to see your house put together. Oh, I have a hot tub in my house or the tree house. And a birdcage. <laughs> it's just really, really fun. I think it comes across in this game that they were having a good time designing it. And when I doubly, doubly, doubly recommend, even if you don't like car drafting, check this one out. Now, it can be a little cutthroat. There can be some, I'm going to take this just so you don't get it. That's all in there. You don't have to play like that, you know, but you can. Or it can be a lighter affair if that's what you want to do. Very, very neat. Very cool. And one I truly, truly recommend. Dreamhouse is an absolute key. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.